Hi, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, your one-stop shop for websites and online stores with all sorts of incredible marketing tools and analytics. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name's Peter. Good to see you all here today. I, well, there was a point in my life when I had zero fountain pens. And now I have, I have all of these pens. See, check it out. I mean, and, and all of these pens, right? But today I'm gonna do a, a first for this channel. That it, that's right, a top five. I'm gonna show you my top five fountain pens. It's none of these. These are, a lot of these are fine pens, especially the ones here I'm holding in my hand. Hands. But today we're gonna look at five special ones and maybe one honorable mention that have a special place in my heart and in my hand and on the paper. And if you're into top fives, I can give you another top five real quick, say top five favorite kind of potatoes. Let's see, uh, I don't know, I had something for this. Russet potato, Idaho potato, uh, Yukon gold, uh, Mr. Head, uh, couch potato. Anyways, there you go, there's five at least. The first pen we're gonna look at, and we're gonna do these in order of when I got it roughly, so chronological order if you will, is this, the Kawiko Sport. And yeah, it's a little pen. It fits little in my hands and even better, it fits in your pocket well. I've lost this before several times and I only recently found it before doing this video. In fact, I thought it had fallen down between maybe the cushions of a couch that I don't have or maybe slipped down between two molecules or in between an atom and another atom somewhere because it's that small, that's a good thing. It fits in your pocket when it's this small. You can take the cap off, however. If you put it on the back like that, it gets big again. And a regular, and it's regular size pen. What's not to like? The Quico Sport is about, uh, let's see, I have it written down here, 15 to $20. Although I did go the extra mile here and spent maybe $8 on this little piston converter, right? That way I don't have to buy the cartridges. I'm gonna give you a little demonstration of how it works. This is the... Kawiko Sport. I'm trying to write sp sportily. There's a nice sporty check mark for you, right? And this has been my daily carry. Uh, it's not currently my daily carry. I don't put this in my pocket anymore. Um, mostly because I lost it for a while. I guess I got some other daily carry, uh, but it just works good for scribbling, writing, taking notes, drawing, losing. I like it, all right? And these pens, I'm about to show you the next one. Just because I showed you this one first doesn't mean I necessarily like it more. These are all kind of just at the same level, more or less. I like them for different reasons. This next one is the Twisby Eco. And this is just a very solid and well-made pen. Everything about it seems polished and professional. Now you can get it uh, so it's not clear like this, but I don't know why you wouldn't want it to be clear because it's just cool. You can see the ink bubbling around in there. I've got some green ink in there. Look how shiny and nice that is. This all just feels so smooth and nice. Uh, it even comes with like some little like tools. It comes with like a little red wrench for uh, adjusting this if you need to. Uh, it comes with like some oil to put in here in the piston. You don't need to buy a piston converter for it because the piston converter comes with it, built in, part of it. It's got all these special gaskets. It's got a gasket here, a little rubber gasket there. I had the lid on here. I didn't use it for maybe six months. Uncapped it, it wrote again right away. I didn't have to struggle with it at all like I do some of my other pens. I just like it. This one is about 30 to $35, so a little bit more expensive than the, than the previous pen, but still a lot less than other pens. I don't know, it's all up to you how much you want to spend or how far entrenched in this fountain pen hobby you are. If 30 to $35 doesn't sound like a lot to you, then... 
Got a cool little logo. You might have seen this one in a previous video. Here's a knockoff one I bought on Wish a while ago, which looks pretty similar, but it just feels a lot cheaper. It made me appreciate the real Twisby Eco a little bit more. All right, coming up next, third pen we're gonna look at is this. A very plain looking pen. This is the Waterman 55, a vintage pen. This is from the 1950s. I got this at the only, the first and only fountain pen convention I ever went to. Yep, there's a pen con and it's as crazy as you'd imagine. There's pretty much a lot of people sitting around with thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of fountain pens and actually there's also a big mechanical pencil niche at these pen cons, which I did not expect, but it's there. There's like old vintage mechanical pencils and lead holders and stuff. Anyways, that doesn't have anything to do with this. But yes, I spent, um, maybe, well, I think I blocked out of my own memory, but I spent one or two hundred dollars on this pen. This was made before plastic was invented, so it's made out of hardened rubber. Oh wait, let me, let me demonstrate it real quick. The Waterman 55. Uh, that was not a real W. I just realized I didn't demonstrate the Twisby Eco. This is one of the most satisfying pens I have to write with. It flexes a lot and it flows excellently. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's addicting. I don't like drawing with it for the amount of flex it has, but it's very satisfying to write with and if I had to choose a favorite pen, which I don't, I would choose this one. But I don't have to choose a favorite pen, so I won't. But it would probably be this one, even though I don't use it as much as some of the other ones. But you know, it can still have a special place in my heart, even if it's not the one I use the most, right? If I had to choose a favorite website for making and hosting other websites, which I don't, but if I did, which I don't, then I would I would choose squarespace.com. It's actually the website that I use to make my website, peterdraws.com. I've got a little landing page. I've got like a portfolio with a bunch of my art, which I need to update by the way, which they make very easy to do. I've got a shop, which I think is very valuable because they make it so I can sell my own artwork through, through my own website, right? I don't have to use some other third party website. And it's just a good way to have an online presence. I'm telling you, just having an Instagram account might not cut it anymore. So head on over to squarespace.com, check out that free trial. And when you're really ready to get started, go to squarespace.com slash peterdraws. Link in the description, of course. Get 10% off. It's going to be great. You're going to be fantastic. Let me go back and show you what the Twisby Eco writes like. This one actually has some cool green ink in it. Twisby. I'm not sure what this stands for, but that's how you spell it. I'm not sure what ink this is either, but it's definitely interesting, isn't it? Like it wrote like this after I hadn't used it for six months. So obviously I'm happy with it. Okay, next up. Once again, in order of when I acquired them, is this honker right here. This is the Opus 88. Was this like some weird Bauhaus font or something? Who knows? Now you might notice that first of all, it has a huge reservoir. You might also notice this clear, cool, solid acrylic end, the screws in and out. What happens here is when you're not using the pen, you screw this in all the way and there's this pillar that goes all the way through and plugs it up here so that nothing will leak out, right? Sometimes what happens is you forget about this whole screwy action at the end and then uh, you try to write with it and you're wondering why you're expensive. By the way, $120 pen isn't working. And then you Google it or you look at the manual or you just finally somehow remember that you're supposed to screw this part out a little bit so that the ink can flow into the tip like so, and it begins to work. But you might also notice, once again, that this does not look like a normal fountain pen nib, and it's not. This was also in a previous video. It was a bit of a Franken pen. This is, uh, do you see what it says there? 
pilot. There's a pilot parallel nib. These pens normally look like this. This is what a pilot parallel normally looks like. And I took the nib out of there, and I took the normal nib out of the Opus 88. You can get four of these for 20 to 25 dollars, right? I took the nib out of that one and put it in here. It fits perfectly. It's just some sort of coincidence that I saw in another YouTube video. Shout out to whoever figured that out the first time. And uh, so now I have a Pilot Parallel nib with this sweet, huge reservoir of the Opus 88. Check it out. I have it open all the way. Are the floodgates open? I think so. Obviously, this would be way cooler if I knew how to do uh, any calligraphy. It's still super satisfying to do these big, broad calligraphic strokes. And also, the cool thing is you can turn it on its corner like so and do regular pen strokes. And then bring it back down and do nice big wide ones, right? It's very flexible. Like I could, if I had to choose one pen and it couldn't be the Waterman 55, uh, uh, it might be this one just because I can do big strokes, tiny strokes. It looks cool. It's just satisfying the way it just lays down so much ink. Is it not? Okay. So I like that one. Let me close it. So it doesn't leak or something. Even when I have left this open, by the way, the back end, I've done that for multiple months at a time. I've never had any leaking problems, just saying. But I think that's the point of it. Someone will correct me if that's not true, but it's okay. And finally, this might not be a surprise to anyone, but the fifth one is the Muji pen. <sighs> Ta-da! <laughs> All right, um, I think you've seen this before. Just in case someone hasn't watched the previous video, where I introduced the Muji pen, here we have it in all its aluminum and knurled grip glory. Also, I like that for some reason it has these little spots here on this end and on the other end, they're like rubber. And I can't figure out like a truly utilitarian reason for that, but it's very satisfying to just kind of uh, to just kind of absentmindedly poke them with my fingernail sometime. A little bit of kinetic feedback or something, I don't know. Anyways, this is a very satisfying part about the Muji pen is... Well, it may be a little gummed up now. Maybe I should clean it or something. It's not stopping me from using it, but you can just see how well that fits in there together, right? It's more satisfying to put the lid on than take it off at the moment, but... Really, it's amazing. The same exact thing happens on the other end. Oh yeah, that's good. It's a perfect fit. I like it. And it's just good, clean design. This right now is my daily carry. I have this in my pocket. I have a Cohen or lead holder in my pocket and uh, I'm ready for any eventuality. Check it out. You can do anything. It's amazing. Right, it, it struggled there a little bit at the end, but I was really putting it through the fire and flames there. Muji. This is, uh, depending on where you can find it, probably 15 to $20. It kind of comes in and out of stock on Amazon. So I don't know, there's probably other places that sell it too. It's like from uh, Japan. I think. I think Muji is a Japanese idea. I can't tell if it's an idea or a company, a uh, thought of a uh, way of designing things. It might be all three. I don't know. It's, I mean, I could just sit here and scribble lines with it and I'd be happy forever. It's just I like the way it feels, the way it writes, the way it lays down ink. It's great, right? So there's our five pens. Uh, first, the Coico Sport. 15 to 20 dollars. Second, the Twisby Eco, 25 to 30 dollars. Still a good choice though. Third, the Waterman 55, a vintage pen, kind of enthusiast level fountain pen. You'll know when you get there, or you might regret it if you get there too soon. Just be careful. 
but hey, go for it. Who am I to say what you buy? Hundred, two hundred dollars, who knows? Fourth, the Franken pen, which I mean, does not always like that, but I don't know if I would like this as much if I hadn't modified it like this. The Opus 88 with a pilot parallel nib in it, all told probably like maybe $150. Uh, but that's only because I bought a pack of four of the parallel pens. It's worth saying the the cap doesn't post at all on this on this pen. So I'm you know I'm trying to lay all these out like this. And if you put the the pen down without the cap on the back or on the front, it it might roll roll away. So just so you know. And then lastly, but not leastly, the Muji pen. <sighs> I've talked a lot about it, you know, so 15 to 20 bucks. It'll get you a long way, I think. But maybe my judgment is clouded by my fanboyism. It could be. And then I would say my honorable mention, if I had to give one, and I don't, but I will, would be the Lamy Safari, right? This is a classic pen. The Lamy Safari, in fact, was the first fountain pen I ever got. Uh, but since then, actually right away, it gave me problems because I immediately put India ink in it. It got gummed up for two years almost uh, before I realized what I had done wrong. And now I have regular ink in it, real good fountain pen ink in it, the same ink I have in all my other pens here. And uh, I still cannot get it to work consistently. Here I have the Lamy All-Star, which is the aluminum version of the Lamy Safari. And uh, I also have nice fountain pen ink in here. I also have trouble keeping it working. So I don't know, I have had good experience with these pens in the past, but right now I just have a hard time putting them in my top five when I'm struggling with them so much. In the past I haven't struggled, right now I am. So I'm just telling you, okay. Um, for the ink I'm using, at the moment it's platinum carbon ink. This stuff right here, all right, it's pretty good. It's waterproof. If you want some other ink options, in the past I've used stuff like this. Noodler's black ink. It's water-based, as you might notice, so it's not waterproof. Also I have little bottles of stuff like this, which for some reason doesn't have a label on it, but it is Waterman ink, which kind of has the same name as this Waterman's pen, but I think they've changed ownership uh, in the last hundred years. So I'm not sure. Anyway, some good ink options for you there. Pretty much anything that says fountain pen ink will do pretty good in your fountain pens. I've noticed there's, I have like a bunch of different inks here and they all seem to work okay as long as it's not something like India ink. Uh, yeah, anyways, let me know if you have any questions about these pens. They've all done pretty good for me. There's some pretty good ranges of value there. You can go, I'll just, I have to mention another pen. If you want a really nice pen for super cheap, this is like two or three dollars on Amazon, a Jinhao 250. It's made entirely of aluminum or some other type of solid feeling metal. And I mean, I haven't taken the trouble of getting this one working again right at the minute, but uh, I'm pretty sure it comes with this piston. Oh yeah, this pen is empty. No wonder it's not working. I would, con I would look, it's, it's two and a half dollars. So you don't need to spend $20 if you don't want to. And it feels okay. I don't know. It's not my top five, but it could be your first pen. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for watching. It's been real. I don't want to say that, but it's too late. Uh, all right. Goodbye. Woo.